Thursday, June eighteenth, and this is of course the video log takes thirty thousand to a million. After I go through the account, uh, I want to talk about tax loss harvesting and how you can save a bunch of money on your car insurance by switching to. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you can save money on your tax bill by employing some buy and sell strategies that I'll, I'll go over in a minute. It's fairly simple, and once you know how taxes work when it comes to capital gains and dividends and whatnot, it's it's pretty easy to execute. I'm not going to go over it in, in super big detail, but I it's really helpful for you to and me to keep this in mind whenever we're managing our own accounts like I am and um, it could cost us a lot of money if we don't do things at least try to do things right so first I'm gonna go through the account show you where I'm at and uh, then I'm gonna talk about it about the uh, tax loss harvesting strat okay um, I am sitting at ninety one thousand four hundred and thirty five dollars and eighty six cents I've had a gain of about four hundred sixty eight dollars today I'm doing negative, I think. Oh, actually positive on the week. Uh, one month, 8.75%. And I always try to compare myself to the market. So I'm going to pull out the chart of S&P 500 or the SPY to see if the SPY did more than 8.75% this week. Let's see. SPY did. I mean, this uh, month. SPY is up on the week. 6.2%, so I'm beating the SPY on the week. I'm very happy about that. I always want to be doing better than the markets uh, because otherwise, if I'm not doing better than the markets, what's the point of holding, of, of managing an account, right? You might as well just buy the SPY or the VOO and uh, let it sit, correct? And in fact, if you think that you're not going to be able to beat the market, you should do that. You should definitely just buy VOO and uh, stay invested in and just keep reinvesting the dividends and put all your you know all your extra cash in there it's not a, a bad strategy in fact if you do that you're gonna beat 90 percent of investors that's nine zero no one nine percent I mean nine zero percent ninety it's a very effective strategy and uh, that's why all the financial investors basically recommend it so beating the market great but if you think that you can't be in the, the top 10% and apparently I have the ego or whatever the uh, what is it called audacity the hubspa what was the uh, what's the term there um, that I think I can beat the market then you would be doing all kinds of crazy stuff to study up and see if you can find an edge to beat it uh, as always you can pause on any of at any point of the video to look at these positions these are all my options positions here on the right you can uh, pause the browser and uh, all the information is given to you right here. I have uh, Cameco, CCJ, this is the symbol, the price of the strike price of the option, the expiration date and the number of contracts and whether it's a sell or a buy contract here. So you can uh, examine these options here. A lot of them are expiring on the 19th of this month, which is tomorrow. So I'm looking forward of, of, to re-rolling some of the options. Only a few of them will actually execute namely the uh, AT energy transfer option um, the nine dollar call here from chemical the ten dollar call from chemical maybe depending on what happens tomorrow it's sitting at 10 30 or something like that right now and that's about it everything else is going to expire worthless which is great news for me because I've sold these contracts I haven't bought them and um, here we go some more contracts all the way up I have like 40 contracts and of course the Apple contract, the Apple uh, call here. Uh, it's sitting at $10 positive today. Apple went up $72. Pretty flat, pretty non-event market. I think um, very uneventful. NYMT up $57, O up $38. So in Chemical gained 315. Let's go into Chemical to figure out. It's 1033, so it looks like you know the 10 if if it doesn't drop tomorrow the $10 um, call option here there it is at the bottom this call option will definitely execute this call option will execute and the rest of them will expire worthless the ones that are expiring tomorrow okay moving, moving on 
from the options I have um, let's see some precious metals are fairly flat to the end to the downside a little bit uh, uranium companies with exception of chemical were a little bit down pretty flat day honestly not very eventful um, Rio Tinto down a little bit so I'll take it SBRA up eighty dollars now he, I've I'm happy to say that I will be completely deleveraged come this Friday because of this execution of, of this uh, couple option contracts right now I only have six hundred ninety three dollars on margin putting my total account market value at ninety two thousand one twenty nine but once these contracts sell then it will revert back to its actual value which is ninety one thousand or whatever it'll be somewhere around there um, as always these things are really fun to look at to see kind of the breakdown of the account but it really doesn't make much sense when I have so many options going at the same time this only records the uh, positions right the number of shares and the symbol that you have so it doesn't really paint a very good picture according to this I have twenty six thousand dollars in Apple and fifteen thousand in chemical but you know there's a lot of option plays there so especially in chemical I have all fifteen hundred shares pre-sold through option calls so if the price was like twelve dollars right now I'd basically be have zero chemical not fifteen thousand alright moving on so complete leverage I'm pretty happy about that so now if there is a significant downturn I can start leveraging you back up again but at this point I'm fully invested and um, the only bearish side I have of the account is the call options that I've sold against a significant portion of my account so I'm about I would say like 90 85 90 percent uh, bullish at this point when it comes to the positioning of my account if you think that's wank <laughs> or wrong or stupid um, the previous videos I've made talk about some of my reasoning as to why I, I'm positioning the account this way so but I don't want to make this video about that. We're gonna we're gonna have different topic to talk about, okay? Which is tax loss harvesting. So, tax loss harvesting is a simple procedure, and but it's very hard to calculate sometimes, if especially if you don't want to bother with it. Um, personally, I keep more or less a mental note of how well how profitable how much you know how many sales I have and how many thousands of profit I've made this year or how many thousands of losses I've made and and my goal is to try to make that number into something close to zero or barely in the positive if I can and uh, the and, and the reason is because the net value of those profits will be taxed and the operations I usually do on this account are short term therefore I'll probably be taxed on something closer to 20 percent for short-term gains so I want to try to get erase that number um, so the way you do it okay the way you do it is you wanna sell losing positions and have that minus number on your books to counteract any kind of profit that you've been taking from a winning position and then you can take the sum of that, right? You can take the sum of those uh, two sales and invest it in something similarly, similar to uh, what you just sold. In in order to make a, you know a good investment that perhaps uh, will be profitable next year, right? So if you want to lighten up with something that you think is overvalued, you might want to balance that out with something that you think um, is not going to recover as much. So there is a case to be made about selling losers um, and in fact I don't mind so much if some of my positions are losing as long as it's not too many <laughs> because if I don't like them especially as much anymore I can sell them off to balance out any kind of profits that are made from through selling options or um, you know capital gains by selling stock so that's basically it that's the that's what that's what tax loss harvesting is and this process can be actually automated there are many companies out there like I know Wealthfront does it but other quote-unquote robo advisors will do this for you automatically to minimize your tax burden and the good thing about that is that it in increases your cost basis for purchasing a stock so 
And that's very important because if you have a higher cost basis, then you will be taxed less on a smaller profit, right? So if, if I buy a stock at 90 and I sell it at 100, that's $10 profit. But if my cost basis wasn't 90, if it was like 50, then I'd have a $50 profit and I'd be taxed on that, which is going to be a larger amount. So it's just a way to minimize taxes and, and increase your efficiency of your account. Now, I mean, if you like paying taxes, that's good. You can, you can go ahead and pay that. But I think there's no sense because the, the way that it works is the, the taxes don't participate in the downside, right? So whenever you're losing on a position, it's not like the government's going to come in and say, oh, um, I noticed that your, you know, Hertz position <laughs> um, has been down 80% and uh, you have negative, you know, $8,000 of realized losses. So to help you out, here's a couple grand, right? Reverse tax in order to offset your losses. It doesn't work that way. But that's exactly what happens on the upside, right? So if you have a gain of $10,000, they'll take two in tax. Um, so it's a bit unfair, right? Things are stacked against you. So you want to try to be as efficient as possible and minimize the official profits that you're your your uh, recording at the end of the year and that's basically it that's uh, tax loss harvesting in a nutshell um, I definitely advise guys if you I would advise if you're new to this right if you're new to investing and all that and I mean I've been doing it for like 15 years or something and I'm still new I feel like <laughs> I still got a lot to learn so but if you're super new, my advice to you is to actually have most of your um, net worth when it comes to investments in an automated uh, brokerage account, like a robo-investor like Wealthfront or something like that, where they do all this uh, tax loss harvesting for you, and then have a small portion of your investment net worth into an active managed account like Robinhood or any kind of brokerage like E-Trade or TD Ameritrade or you know, interactive brokers or what have you and um, to try to manage things your, yourself in order to build up the skill required to um, manage your own funds when you're wealthier. There is a lot of knowledge that goes into it. Um, the tax code is very complicated. Um, try to get a, you know, do some daily reading about, you know, what, what's, what's, uh, what are some of the obstacles that you might encounter as an investor each day and uh, build that you know, base of knowledge to help you navigate through the investing world. I mean, it's not very easy. Right? Most investors lose money. Like I said, you know, 90% of the people don't even beat the S&P 500. And I'm including professionals in this. There was a study about it, and that's what the number is. Including professionals, they don't beat it. And even professionals, they might not have as many losses as an average investor, but you got to consider their fees. So at the end of the day, some of these managers, you know, you're better off leaving your money in a uh, CD or a you know, money market account or a savings account with high interest rate. Speaking of interest rates, you are taxed at ordinary income for any unearned quote unquote uh, income from interest so just there's your tip of today so you know about that so if you put your money in a savings account and you have a ton of money and you make like you know I don't know hundred thousand dollars in interest you're gonna be paid at a, as an ordinary income so the tax rate is gonna be quite high um, some ways to avoid it here's more tips is you could be investing your money in muni municipal bonds um, you can go ahead and Google that muni bonds or municipal bonds and those are usually tax exempt especially I think from federal um, tax I think all taxes honestly but I, I personally don't have any muni uh, bonds investments but I, I probably should but I don't think I have large enough net worth to be able to be uh, really gain anything from the modest interest rates that they give I may say modest but they're probably higher than um, you know treasuries and stuff like that so 
it might be a good way to go for for most savers uh, if you're a bit more risk averse and the stocks offer too much volatility for you then I think it's a very intelligent way to go with muni bonds and have some of those earnings be tax exempt it's, and uh, especially if you can lower your ordinary income like that you can still have like a tiny job that earns you I don't know ten twenty thousand dollars a year and you won't be able to you know it's not going to stack on top of your interest and your tax rate will be really really low so you can try that um, you know I don't make a lot of money myself so I'm just a, I guess a good saver or have been at times in my life and I always try to minimize my tax burden because it helps me out a lot in the long run so you know knowledge is power and use these tricks and tips and look at Google some of the things that I talked about today in, in order to try to gain some perspective on your account and especially if you're starting to amass a decent amount of money you might be worth investing your time into learning how to protect it so you don't always have to hire professionals to do it for you and you don't have to be beholden to those robot advisor um, managing fees for the rest of your life right 0.25 percent might seem like a low percentage now and it definitely is but if you're starting to have millions of dollars then it adds up and it might take a hit on your net worth growth and eventually your lifestyle all right I'm gonna leave it right right here because um, I've said everything I need to say and there's really nothing super eventful in the market that's happening so it is Thursday looking forward to tomorrow to have my options expire so I can re-roll them on Monday and I'll make another update after that on Monday to let you know what's been happening alright hopefully you're making more money than me out there for now peace out